Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Premiere script and tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to render sequences and other things out of Premiere. And this is just going to allow you to automate any rendering you want to do basically through Media Encoder. So with the script we create today, you'll be able to take, for example, an active sequence you have open, run the script, and then immediately begin the render process using whatever preset you choose and also have the ability to select uh, the output location of that file as well. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this, uh, which will just have the basic code that you'll need to create the script. And down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you want to become a channel member, get cool perks like a Discord status, some shoutouts, code in advance, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and help support us as well. So to get started writing this script, I'm just going to create a new JavaScript file, and I'm going to make sure I'm linked here to Adobe Premiere because we're just going to be using this script for testing. Uh, you can bake this into an extension or whatever you find uh, necessary. We're going to start by grabbing our project and storing that in a variable. So we'll say project is equal to our application Premiere and the project that's open, which I just have this uh, testing project with a bunch of uh, VR video lined up here. Then I'm going to get my active sequence. There's a couple ways we can uh, export things. We can choose like a file, a sequence, or a project item. So in this case, I'm going to grab my sequence that's open here. And the way we do that is by saying project.activesequence. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up the object model viewer and take a look at what our options are for basically rendering and adding things to the render queue in Premiere. The way we're going to check this out is by going to the encoder object. If you're in the uh, text guide, you can just find encoder. And the encoder object basically contains all the basic stuff we need. So the first thing we probably want to do is if we want to render something out of Premiere, we need to launch the uh, media encoder to be able to run it. So there's a command here called launch encoder. And all we have to do is call encoder.launchEncoder. So let's go ahead and just say app.encoder.launchEncoder. And hopefully this should uh, just launch Adobe Media Encoder. And yes, it's going to do that. And uh, basically now what we can do, if you want to get a little more advanced, this will return a bool, it said. So if it does successfully launch Media Encoder, it will return true. And if it doesn't launch Media Encoder, maybe it's not installed or something, uh, it will return false. And you can use that if you need to check something before you render. So now that we've launched Encoder, that's good. We now need to add something to the encoder and we can see what our options for that are here. We have Encode File, Encode Project Item, and Encode Sequence are sort of the main ones. Since we already have a sequence, let's start with that one. So we just need to grab a sequence object probably. And it also requires some strings. I'm going to say app.encoder.encode sequence. And the first thing I'm going to give it is our sequence itself. And in this case, when I look at the uh, object model viewer, it just gives me a sequence object, uh, P0, P1, number bool bool, which is not very descriptive as to what I need to provide it. So sometimes it can be beneficial to go to the actual scripting guide. Let's look at uh, encode sequence. It requires a output path, a preset path, a work area, and remove upon completion. So let's go ahead and give it the output path. Let's save it to something like my desktop. So usually in Premiere, the file format I give it is this kind on Windows. So I'll say C, my weird username, go into the desktop. And what do we want to call the file on the desktop? Let's just call it uh, encoded video. And I'm gonna want this to be an MP4, so I'll set the file extension. Then the next argument is our preset path. We can navigate to our presets in our documents, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder. And then we should have all of our presets here in presets. So we can just reference one of these. I have a max quality or an Instagram uh, quality preset I can use. So I'll paste in this path. Make sure I'm using double uh, slashes here. Then the argument after that we need to provide it is the work area. 
This we can give a zero to encode the entire area or we can do the in and out or work area. Let's just do the entire thing. So we'll give it a zero. And then lastly, remove upon completion. This will remove the job from media encoder itself uh, once it's finished. So let's go ahead and remove it. And now if we go ahead and try this out, should launch media encoder and then begin encoding our sequence that is active here. And you can see it switched to my Instagram presets and it's now saved well, it wants to save this video onto my desktop, but we haven't actually initialized the render process. So looking back into our uh, scripting guide here, we can see we had launch encoder, but we also have start batch. And this will actually start the uh, batch rendering process. So we'll just say app.encoder.startbatch. And now that should be enough to both launch it and then uh, start rendering it. Now you can see we're actually starting the render of our video. And don't forget once it's done, we set it to true. So it should remove the job from media encoder once the render is complete. Next, let's encode a file from anywhere in our computer uh, using the same method, except instead of encode sequence, we're going to be using encode file. So I'll go ahead and call this encode file. And the only difference, it's also going to require an output path, a preset path and all that. The only difference is it wants a file path uh, rather than a sequence object. So I'll go ahead and provide it with a file path just as it wants here. And I'm going to use this test.mp4 uh, Star Wars video I have recorded and make sure my slashes are proper here. And let's go ahead and try and run this. Hopefully it should just load. It doesn't seem to like my path. I'm going to try adding slashes in the spots with spaces here. So I'm gonna try putting slashes in front of the spaces here, which is sometimes an issue that it will give you. Nope, illegal parameter type. So I'm getting an illegal parameter type. I have my video, my output path, my preset path, my work area, and that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to my desktop and see if uh, maybe simplifying the path will improve our issue here. So use test, it's still not working. Let's go ahead and try and use the other type of slash. Sometimes Premiere can be a little bit finicky when testing. Still an illegal parameter type. Let's go ahead and try and create a file object maybe with the string we used and see if we can just get a different path. Maybe it needs the FS path or something. We'll say files equal to a file with this path. I'm going to alert if our file exists. And since we're in Premiere, we can't alert anything other than a string. So we need to convert it to a string. The file does exist. So now let's use our file.fs name. I wonder if we're giving it a different bad parameter. So our file is referencing our test and it exists. It really doesn't want to encode this file, does it? Let's try removing the previous. What is illegal here? Sometimes my last resort when I'm very confused about this, so I'll go into the actual CEP samples and I'll take a look at what they've used. Let's uh, search for encode file. So it's using an FS name, file to transcode. It's gonna take whatever they choose, try and transcode that. So my issue is I've been using true as my remove upon completion, but it should be zero or one. I'm hoping that will solve our issue. And yes, that seems to be the issue. So it wasn't actually the file path that was wrong when encoding this specific file. It was that we needed to have zero or one, not true or false as uh, our remove from media encoder after. For some reason it was working before, but then it just snagged into this issue. So that's how you encode any file from your computer. Now let's take a look at the last type of encoding we can do, which is encoding a project item. So now instead of providing it with a file name or a sequence object, we need to provide it with a project item. Now project item is any of these guys inside of Premiere. So this could be potentially a file or a sequence. So I'm going to now actually loop through all of my project items and add each one and render it out of media encoder just to see what happens. So now instead of encode file, we're going to use encode project item. And now I'm gonna put that inside of a for loop. 
Now the for loop is going to be starting at zero. And we're also going to need our root project item. This is what is basically representing this here and contains all of its children, which are these elements. So I'm going to say var project root is equal to our project dot root item. And then we're going to loop from i is less than our project root dot children dot length increment i by one. And the current project item is going to be project root dot children i. If I've done this correctly, it should, let's actually change the deletion to zero so it doesn't delete from meet encoder. This should uh, add all of our project items incrementally uh, to the queue here. And it seems to give us a crash. So let's go ahead and maybe start the batch after our first one. If i is equal to zero, We'll start the batch. If i is equal, to, now let's go ahead and try this again here. Looks like it's still crashing Premiere. So quickly to test why this isn't working, we're going to alert our project roots.name, make sure that's valid. And I'm also going to alert each time through our project roots.childreni.name. And I'm going to just remove everything else for now because all I want to know is that the uh, information we're running through is uh, valid information. Okay, so we run it and we need to fix our code. Testing.project is accurate. And now we get four of, through our loop, which is good. So that means something to do with our loop is messing things up. If we take a look at encode project item, it does require an actual project item to render. So let's go ahead and store each one as this project item maybe. And we'll say this project item is equal to that child. And this time I'm going to alert this project item dot to string. This should give me the object type that it is. I just wanna make sure that I am reading uh, the right files here. I'm going to alert this project item now dot to string to see what kind of object it is. As you can see, I'm getting project items. So that is proof that I'm getting the right kind of data type. It just seems to be crashing when uh, looping through it here. So what I'm gonna try and do is just use this variable maybe instead of the iterator. And let's see if this crashes. If I stop it prematurely, maybe it'll stop it from crashing. But it seems after we add the first one, it crashes. One last thing I'm gonna to do to try and fix this is to send it into a separate function. Sometimes I have found that this works weirdly in Premiere. So let's try function render this. And we're gonna give it a project item as a uh, variable there. And each time through our loop here, instead of rendering in this loop, I'm going to say render this, this project item. And I'll put the code that I had previously here and encode this project item with this information. Fingers crossed, let's try this. Seems to still cause quite a pause. So it does seem like there's some limitation on looping through and applying these. Maybe uh, you guys can figure out a solution. So let, what we're gonna do instead is simply render out one of the project items. Uh, you could basically do a, a loop through searching for the right project item and then add that to the queue. I think that would probably work best. So what we're going to do, instead of looping through them all, we're just going to add the first one we see uh, to that. So I'll say project root dot children zero. And this should add the very first uh, project item in our project to meet encoder. And then I also need to uh, start the batch again app.encoder.start batch, load up my project, and this should add the very first one and begin rendering it. And then maybe you could do something where it needs, maybe it needs to wait before you add multiple items. So maybe what you could do is add something, render it, and then detect once it's done rendering and go on to the next item. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how you can render out things out of Premiere, including sequences, project items, and files. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check us out on GitHub, check out the base code for this and try it out for yourself, make adjustments, and uh, find out how you can loop maybe through project items 
down in the description as well. You can follow us on Instagram for other updates. And if you're not a member of our Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.